guess you know when it starts. Okay. Uh, welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm your host, Patrick Cristiano, and I am the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs in New York City and the Hamptons. And I'm here in the LTV studio in Wayne Scott with my guest, Dorothy Frankel, a sculptor and an artist and a good friend of mine on the social scene who I see every place all the time. <laughs> You're always around. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming, Dorothy. It's Thanks, my pleasure Patrick. to have you. Yeah, I, I, I learned a lot about you this weekend that I didn't know. Yeah, well, that was fun. <laughs> yes, that it was, was fun. a lot of fun. Considering we know each other for so many years. Yeah, you know what, what, what I found the most fascinating? That I knew you, I, I know you as a sculptor on the social scene. I had no idea of your background and physical health and and your, your journey from your family with heart disease and learning all about health and, and yeah. physical fitness. And yeah. you know what really blew me away is my favorite place to go in New York City is my gym, the printing house, which I found out over the weekend you created respond, it. You created I it. created it. Tell us yeah. about it. Yeah, well, that goes back until the early eight, 1980s. Yeah, I was hired when it was just a raw building before even their apartments were oh, in. Oh, wow. Yeah, and um, I was very, very lucky. It was the best job I think I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And they hired me as the executive director creator. So I ended up, um, that's where my aesthetics sort of came in because I had to lay out a facility that, in my, that I wanted to be beautiful and enlivening besides, you know, good for health and fitness. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the first private professional fitness centers at the time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was very sort of strict. You came in, we evaluated you, we gave you the routine, and we always measured where you were. At that point, I, was, I finished my master's in applied physiology, and I was very science-oriented and very much into slowly bringing people into health. But it also that's has. A, did it. But it also has a magnificent view of, of the Hudson River and the sun setting. And, <laughs> and uptown down in the Hudson River and the. Um, and lots of glass city. so you can see it all. Exactly. <laughs> well, a, that was the idea, mm -hmm. was to make it really a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really, at that time, we didn't really want to focus on TVs. Now I don't know where it is today, but then everything was looking out. Everything was totally well, bad. today it's been Equinox. Yeah, Equinox so, bought so. it. They made it one of their flagship locations, one of their you know main yeah. places to go. They made the pool prettier than it was. That's the well, only that, thing they Well, really that was a good thing. They, they, I mean, that part was good. Yeah, that, that was the But only. that is funny, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think a lot of people know that Blew I created away. that. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was with them for many, many years, all yeah. of the... All of the 80s, really. You know, I, I always noticed over the years how you keep yourself in wonderful shape, but I never thought about it. We never had a conversation about physical fitness or anything like that. Well, um, you know, but as a sculptor, I mean, you really have to be in some sort of shape or you kill yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's very heavy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, you do have to keep yourself in shape. But thank you for that, because sometimes I wonder, am I staying up enough, you know? But, yeah, <laughs> you, I, try to. I try you, to. You, you also, um, you, you started... Drawing was it or sculpting? When, when did sculpting first come into your? Class? It was sculpting. Eight, 80, 1980, really? or something you said. The late, yeah, the late 80s. It was really the mid 80s. It was when I started coming out here, and I was um, with my partner, and we had a, a house, and we had to fix things. That's really how it started. And you started in wood. And started in wood. And yeah, you started carving things. No, really. Um, I started with trees and taking the trees and making sculptures out of branches and trees. And I started with the deer, you know, for Christmas, and I started with figures. And, oh, I should have brought you photos of that. And that was a lot, a lot of fun. And I could not believe how much I loved it. And then at one point when I was consulting in the city, I had time, and I went into a shop out here to learn some basic woodworking mm -hmm. skills. And then I started making, you know, more scrap wood from the shop kind of assemblages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then slowly... Um, I had never touched clay, and then there was an adult ed class with Peter Lippman Wolf. Wow. And that was my first time touching clay. Where was that? That was at the high school, Sac yeah. Harbor High School. No, it was. It was. I mean, it art really wasn't it something I thought about. I was really in another field. And it just slowly started developing. And then I, one day I just said, so many years ago, out of nowhere, I just said, I'm a sculptor. Uh, there was no basis to it. I just said, I am. And then I, I took a figurative sculpting class. I took one class in drawing. And then I basically taught myself with a class here or there. 
Wow. And I got very obsessive about practicing every day and practicing and having models and practicing and doing technique. Yeah, well, technique, that's we, how we, we talked about it on the yeah. telephone, how yeah. a solid technique. You have to have technique. I mean, it totally serves yeah. you. And, Without and then, it, you don't no. know what you're doing, really. No. Right. And then I went to Italy, and I took a stone carving class. And my teacher was, um, uh, sh she would do some of Jeff Kuhn's sculptures, and she'd do Botero sculptures. And she was very, very strict and rigid. And she really laid the line, like it's an all or nothing deal. Either you're in sculpting, and then get in it and do it thoroughly. Wow. And that was that was a good a good motto. So she raised the bar for you. She raised the bar. Well, mm -hmm. she was fantastic. Mm -hmm. She's still fantastic. Which you've maintained ever since. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you, you know, the, what thank really you. surprised me, because like we started talking, and I had no idea that you have so many works in so many interesting <clears throat> public places. And we have we have a few slides. So I want to get to the slides yeah, right away, sure. so we can talk about <clears throat> talk about it right away. So let, let's start with what's Which the first slide we have? Is, is it? The, I think it's um, the cats and the dogs. Oh, that was um, that was. This uh, is it's up on the screen. That? Yeah, that it's dogs weird. and cats in New York City. Yeah, and. Well, I had two. But it, it was what was something. About, what was what, where dogs and cats in a show? It was uh, yeah. No, it was public art. It was New York City public art. And it was Parks Department public art. Yeah. And this is this is it. Yeah, it's that's up on it. the screen now. Yeah. So it was three dogs and a cat, something like that. Yeah. And I also had the hand sculptures. That was in Carl Schutz Park. Well, now, now we also have the uh, the circle. This is circle yeah. two five. This is at the Parish Museum. That's at the Parish Museum. And how big is this? That's not very large. It's maybe about 16, 17 inches tall, maybe 20 inches. Mm -hmm. It's about that tall. But the dogs and yeah. cats we just saw, those are oh, life size. Oh, those, those are, are life large. Size. Yeah, those are life size. And, and this, yeah. this is now, what, when did you get this into Parish? Last Museum? summer. Last summer. Last summer, I got accepted in their collection. Oh, how cool. And that Terrific. was, thank you, I was very happy about that. Yeah. And the next one we see in the garden oh. at Guildhall all the time, tell us about yeah, this Yeah, that's one. love, yeah. And it's, yeah, that's and love, sign language. Sign language. Yeah, four hands, yeah, love. I did love. And this is in, larger than the life size. Oh, it's size. always, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That always has been my thing. I always do a little bit larger than life size or a lot larger than life size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's very rare I do life size. Uh -huh. Except for what I did with that series is I made um, little paperweights of the same thing, so that you could have them on your desk. Otherwise, it's that size so and hopefully you always larger. Like, you always like life larger than life. I don't. Think, yes, I always <laughs> like larger than life. <laughs> I don't think I could control it actually. <laughs> it just sort of went like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and this is another cool then, show. This one. This one's oh, at yeah. Bay Street Theater. Yeah. It's called it's the the Writers the, the Writers, writers group. group. Yeah, I did. Three. I did the writers group one and two, and then just the chairs waiting for the writers, because I had a lot of friends that were writers, and they would invite me to listen to their readings. They were the potluck players. Mm -hmm. And now Jan Buckaloo, she had her reading at um, Bay Street this year. Mm -hmm. Took many, many years to get that to happen, but mm -hmm. she did have it. Yeah. And now, now when you how did, like how did you get the sculptor into Bay Street? How did how did that? Well, you know, it was it was just very fluky. I I saw Tracy one day, and she said, you know, I saw you did the writers group, and it was for the you know they in the spring they have that writers workshop. Mm -hmm. The uh, what is it called? Um, I I'm, guess I'm it's a sure. yeah in the spring in April or May they do a new writers get to present it. I think it's called the New Works Oh, that's, a, that's got a new works called. Yes, yes, yes. So she said to me, well, why don't we have your sculptures right here in the lobby on both sides so when you enter, we enter into your sculptures and then we come into the theater. Mm -hmm. And then she kept, she kept them up for the entire summer. So they were there the whole summer and it was wonderful. Yeah, I mean, it was the most appropriate place for them. So but is it now a permanent installation there? No, no, oh. no. It was there for that that one hole, mm -hmm. I think two years ago was mm -hmm. over there, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was really a lot of fun. It, it, it's yeah. a terrific piece. Thank you. Yeah, so Thank we, you. and then we have, oh, Henry Buell. Oh yeah, Henry then, Buell. Now, the, this piece oh, is called Connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Connection. It was, it was at the Southampton Arts Center? Yeah, that because he Henry had. Did he buy it, he bought this piece? Oh yeah. So no, cool. I've, he has a couple of my sculptures. But in this show, he, 
he only put one of my sculptures in, which was Connection, mm -hmm. which I'm very happy he put it in because it's a museum collection. Mm -hmm. Did you get to see it? It was at the Southampton no, I didn't. Art Center, and it was a spectacular, very eclectic show. I mean, he is very eclectic in his collection. Well, did he, did he curate that show? Is that what he did? Yeah. So, he, oh, he, with uh, Ryan. Ryan is his, you know, his assistant curator. With Henry, sure. Henry has tremendous input. And I think this uh, Amy from the Southampton um, Art Center. Mm -hmm. But I think it's Henry decided what's going in. Sure. So how many pieces were in that show? Oh, I mean, not that yours. was huge. I mean, it I mean, took over the entire, it took over the entire center. It was a huge and this was show of year. hands just right. now. It just finished July of right now, 2017. It was there all of late June and all of July. Oh, it was terrific. It was so, it was. We, I didn't even, it was, I didn't even know that. It was about really it. coming into a museum show. Wow. I mean, it was, it's, it was so spectacular. He had Rodin's, he had, he had a variety of artists from very, very well known to medium known, you know. And it just was an array of everything you could do with hands. I mean, his collection is well worth looking at. So, so how did it come about that you got to be a part in it? Well, you know, long ago, well, long ago, like in 2004, my sculpture, that piece was up in New York City, public art. Uh -huh. And um, I had known of Henry, he's known of me. And he's, he came and he decided that was the piece he wanted to buy. And at one point, he was looking into making it, enlarging it to make it into a monument size. Mm -hmm. And then he also bought another piece called the Mudra Fountain. He has that in his loft in the city, mm -hmm. and he has peace. <laughs> yeah. So he's been a wonderful, he's been a wonderful support to me as an artist. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's been a wonderful support to me, and I'm very grateful to him for everything. And he, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a wonderful humanitarian. He's, he is. He's a, he's a great... He is. Collector of art, too. A great yeah, collector, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he has a beautiful show, and he has a beautiful photographer. His main thing was photographs, mm -hmm. hand photographs, and then he moved into hand sculpture. I didn't know that. And before that, it was sunflowers. So if you go to his home, Well, I've, been, I've been to his home. I've seen the sunflowers. Everything is sunflowers. That's, that's sunflowers. Well, yeah, galore. I met Jane Fonda at his home. So did I. <laughs> that was really cool. Yes, she was. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to that gala with Jane Fonda, and that was cool. But yeah, so then anyway, he's, then he switched and started collecting hand and I was very lucky to be in that, yeah. So, so we also have a close-up of that sculpture. There it is. Oh, yeah, the connection. Uh, the connection. connection. This is that Henry yeah. Buell uh, bought his, and, and showed. Yeah. Uh, and has, has been a, a big promoter of yours, it sounds like. Yes, he like. has. And then we have something that just two weeks ago, <laughs> tell us about this one. <clears throat> oh, well, oh. That's, circle well, that, that's not the one. That's one of the circles. That's Oh, this isn't it? What is this? No, one? that's Circle of Peace, but it's Circle of Hope. Actually, it's the circle behind it in the center is the one that just went to, um, that just oh, went. Oh, so I got this messed up. I'm sorry. That's okay. That but went so, to Well, the, tell us about this one, and then tell us about what happened at Southampton Hospital. It's cool. Okay. So this is the Circle of Peace? Yeah. This was the, that's the largest circle I've ever made. How big yeah. is it? That's huge. That's like 13 feet or something. I put me in there so that you could see the, the you know, the the, the, the scale, uh -huh. or you wouldn't you wouldn't know how tall it, how uh -huh. big it is. And it, just so that you know, that means that it's like six, seven hundred pounds of clay to make it. How do you? Do That's what that like was that? like. How do you do that? Do you well, put, what the, does it work in one piece, or do you put it together? No, or? you have to cut it to get it into the kiln. But what I do is I follow the. The concept is an enso, really, which is a what? enso, E-N-S-O, e which is a, a Buddhist, it's a Buddhist symbol oh. of a circle. Okay. And it just means that you go into like a very quiet state and you, um, it's really about a connection to yourself mm -hmm. and a connection to life mm -hmm. and just the circle of life. It's mm -hmm. really about that. Mm -hmm. And when a, a, a monk or a nun would do it on calligraphy, they just, you do it in one go. You just make it one go. So I had a commission many years ago. Someone came to me and said, well, would you make an enso for me from my meditation garden? And being literal as a sculptor, I said, oh, that's on paper. And he said, I want it in sculpture. So I read up on what is an enso, and I said, well, I'm going to follow the same principle. I'm going to make it in one go. So what I did is I laid out the floor, and then I just had to pound the clay and just keep going until I laid out the circle in one go. 
that's how I did it. So your first one was a commission? The first one was a commission, and that started and it. And it inspired you to? Yeah. And it's all about yeah. connecting to the universe? It is. And the yeah. energy. And to, your, you know, and to your quiet. I mean, you, I have to go into a quiet place to make them. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's not always so easy. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it is, sometimes not at all. So I have to wait, uh -huh. and I really, I always stuck to that that I would do it in one go, which could have taken, you know, half a day, a day to just lay it out. That mm -hmm. laying it out is just step one, because clay you have to hollow out to fire. So it takes a long time to get it set, mm -hmm. you know, and to get the exact form and get the texture on it that I wanted. Oh, the texture is another big thing about yeah. your stuff. Yeah, uh, texture. Your, your, your work. Yeah. Um, sorry for calling it stuff. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. It's your art. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but you, I, texture is a is a big component, and uh, that you, the, the yeah. materials you use have a roughness to them or a smoothness. Or it it depends upon what it is. I mean, if it's a figure, it's smooth. If it's mm. hands, it's probably smooth. But if it's going to be an abstract piece, it probably like I have wall abstract pieces. Mm -hmm. They're textured like the circle, and then they're and this and I felt for the circle, it gave it a depth, and it gave it because you're going to look at something. So I w I wanted the viewer to be, and myself as the viewer, to be looking at something and being brought into it. I felt if it was just smooth, there was nothing that was going to bring me into it. You know, I'd feel, sometimes when I see sculpture, I feel, I don't feel a life force to it. I really want, I really want a life force to mm -hmm. it, because it's a piece there. And if it's going to be there, I want you to feel something. So you encourage people to touch your stuff? Too, oh, yeah. Right? Because it's important. It's tactile. Yeah. I mean, sculptors are tactile. Yeah, because I, I think that's a really important ingredient in, in, in sculpture, to be able to feel it, to touch yeah. it. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so this, this, this circle of peace uh, is, is... It's the largest one in the front there. And how and long did it take you to make that one? Oh, that took a long time. About how long? Oh. Make it up. Okay. <laughs> Make it it'll be it'll be almost true anyway. <laughs> okay, maybe I don't I don't know a month or more. It probably took well it takes a couple of it probably took a couple of months because I had to lay it out, has to dry, had to texture it, then I had to turn it over, then I have to go to a welder, and I have to get a you know something to hold it up with. The whole I mean it, that probably took half a, a year, half a year, to a year to do it. Yeah. But now 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 you have circle of hope. Is that a smaller? Is, what is well, it's not quite as big as but that, that, but it's about um, seven, six, seven feet tall. It's about, yeah, it's large. It's larger than I am. And this yeah. is the piece that was just installed at Southampton Hospital two weeks ago. Yes, it was and just where installed is that, there. Where it's, is at the, it's in their Garden of Hope, which is... Oh, they have a Garden of Hope? They have a Garden of Hope, yeah. And it was very, very nice. They, when I went, I thought they wanted a painting. And when I got there, they... The, you know, Steve Bernstein was there, all these people were there, and they were like, well, here's the garden. How about something here? So it took me by surprise for a moment, but it felt like that was the right fit. So I went through my work, and I thought, all right, this circle is the right one for that location. And it, it, it looks, I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with it. And, I, and it's at the far end, so when you come into the garden, that's your focal point. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah, so but they, they have nice. Had a a formal installation? No, ceremony. we're going to be doing that. Oh, so. Yeah, we're going to be doing that. I mean, I just put it there. I mean, we just installed it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that was big. Do you have any idea big. when they're going to do that? I think it should be the next couple of, within the next week or two or something like that. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do something about it, yeah. They're getting the plaque made, and yeah, we'll do something. And I think it's very nice to have something in a hospital s setting because we've all been sick. We've all had friends that are sick, and yeah, I think it's when... The visitors to the hospital come, and the patients, if they can go outside, or the staff, it gives them hope. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's it's nourishing. It's nourishing. Yeah. You feed the spirit. I think so. Yeah. I hope so, at least. <laughs> I'm sure you do. So, so you also let's let's see this next one. It's this. Oh. <laughs> Kat, th 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 Hillary Clinton. Oh, that's now, Hillary now, Clinton. This yeah. from the Eleanor Roosevelt Legacy in New York. This is called the Thumbs Up Award. Thumbs Up. Now, is this something they give on a regular basis? No, no. Did you tell They just did it. Yeah, she, did Hillary uh, get Judith one? Hope, yeah, she commissioned me. She said... Um, who commissioned you? Judith Hope, mm -hmm. who was the founder of Eleanor Roosevelt Legacy, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful organization. And she, um, she said, well, Ellen Malcolm, who's Emily's List, the uh -huh. president of 
Emily's List, the creator of Emily's List, the founder, and um, Hillary both got thumbs up. So only two and people got a, these awards so far? And Alec Baldwin. Oh. Alec Baldwin. And he has it. When I run into him, he says, I have it in my car, so I always remember thumbs up. <laughs> and I, you know, part of creating this kind of work with the hands really was so that when you look over, you, I, for me and for anybody else, I see thumbs up or I see peace or I see I love you. And it just, you know, sort of resets my button uh -huh. to go back into the good, the good side of life. Oh, it's a pause. Yeah, it's a, it's pause. a pause for you. It's like, yes, it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So I always like, and, he, and it touched him the same way. And I was very grateful to have it for Hillary Clinton. That oh, was, wow. yeah, that was wonderful. And, and the, the last slide we have is, Oh, I love I lo Barry loved this too. I love, I love it. When we're going through the pictures, yeah. oh, we that's said we have to put this one in. Yeah, I love that. Well, I'm trying us, to this, this enlarge is, that. Uh, that's this is pretty four, big, isn't it? It's four feet. Oh, that's it's four feet. Yeah, I'd like it in bronze. And that's what I'm working on now, actually, is to um, try and make, I don't know how many, a certain amount and get them in certain locations. Because I'm very much into positive visuals. Uh -huh. I just feel we need positive visuals. We need to look over and, and feel this, feel love, feel mm -hmm. connected, feel peaceful. We have so much violence in our society, and we have such a crazy government that I just think we need grounding, and I think we need more hope. So that's what I try and do. That's what the hand sculptures are all mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. That's nice that you like that one. I like yeah. that one, too. Yeah, it will, love and kindness is the love solution to everything, I really believe. Yeah. The more we can go to that place. Yeah. Uh, and it's not always easy. No. No, it's not always. I mean, it's practice. Mm -hmm. It's practice mm -hmm. to stay centered. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, tr I do try with that. That's nice that you like that sculpture. But you know, now, I didn't know anything while we were talking about what we were going to do. You surprised me this morning when you came around with all these books. Oh, I yeah. I didn't even know you had published some of these things that are really extraordinary. Thank you. Um, this one is a, this. Oh, the walk. The walk. Yeah. Can we zoom in on this one here? This one here, the walk. Barry? I think they're having trouble. Okay. Yes? Well. Can, can we get this? There we go. There we go. Well, the walk is about going to Morton Wildlife. And the, the I've gone there use sometimes once one to three times a day and for many many 20 years or so mm -hmm. and I really you know I'm an animal protection person and I really wanted to teach kids and adults that you don't have to cage animals you can go there and you can see you know all the wildlife you want to mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. so that's that's really what that's that's about and just a serene it, book. All, it photographs that you took images yeah. of wildlife Yep. In, in their natural In their natural habitat. habitat. Yeah. And, and, you know, there was that point now they really don't want you feeding the birds or anything, so I really don't. But there was a point you could, and mm -hmm. there you could get a variety of birds on your hand, and mm -hmm. sometimes you could get a chipmunk, and sometimes I could get a rabbit. Oh, wow. And the turkeys, you know. Yeah, that's a very hard peck. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was my inspiration. And the hand of feeding the birds from way back, was the inspiration of all my hand sculptures. Mm -hmm. That started it. Wow, yeah. feeding the bird. Feeding the birds. Inspired yeah. you to do the hand sculptures. Yeah. And how many, how many of these books do you have all together? Uh, how many have I created? No, not the walk, but like how many books? Oh, I've created books? Four, four books. Four, and what are they yeah. all called? Well, we calling, calling Me. We have Calling Me. Can you zoom in on the Calling Me? Does this one have the inspirational quotes in it too? Yeah, this one has inspirational quotes. So Calling Me has these really cool inspirational quotes. And, and there, then there's, there's women, women of course. Because I've done women's sculptures. Can you see this one here? I have to put this up. Can I help? And then I have a book called Connection, which, I which is on hands. I love that one. And that's with quotes. That one has yeah. so many cool quotes in it. Yeah, thank it you. really did. Where thank can you. someone find this stuff? Um, I think at Romney Cremoris or at Kenios. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Kenios is a good place to find Yeah, find either books. one. Yeah, they both have them. And, and yeah. how long have you been doing the books? Oh, gee. Uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years. Yeah. I don't know how that started. I think I wanted to, sh because with sculpture, you know, it's not that easy just to show your work. Mm -hmm. It's you need pedestals, you need 
carry it, you need a big place to show it. So I thought, well, how am I going to show the hand sculptures? How am I going to show the women's sculptures? I think that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And then when it came to the walk, I really, I, I felt I needed to say something about nature and just show how beautiful and inspiring it is. And I really had that message of let's try and get the caged animals out of classrooms at schools and bring kids outside so they could see animals. I don't, I've never been a believer of caging gerbils and hamsters mm -hmm. and birds. I've never, I've never liked that. That's always upset me. So this was a way of showing a life force of animals. And then calling me. So the photos in this and, and, and the, the walker, they're, they're apt. All the photos are stunning, but these are. Thank they're, you. They're particularly. Well, stunning. you're a nature person, too. <laughs> so you're, you're a nature but person. these are great, too. These, but these are more landscapes, and these are. The, <clears throat> yeah, these are landscapes and some sculptures. And this was more when I had a, I, I got sick maybe six years ago, and I was in this dark place for a while, and I thought, how am I going to get out of this? And then I thought, well, what, what moves me? What moves me? And that's what that's about, what, what really ta speaks to me. And, and when you were, we're running out of time, but, uh, we have about 30 seconds left. Okay. But when, when you did the connections, yeah. where'd you find all this? How did you, how'd you research all the inspirational stuff? You quoted. Is, oh, is that wasn't your, so hard. That's just that part, part of my of life. That's, that's just part of my life. That's what yeah. I thought. So the, the, all that stuff and connections, that's the philosophy that you live yeah, by. Yeah, that's what I do. And, and it shows. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, well, you, well, Patrick. Good luck for, with this year and good luck Thank with everything you. you're doing. And I hope you can go to the hospital and see the uh, oh, circle of hope because that'll wait. be nice. And thanks for seeing love. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all <laughs>